many things that tend to happen when aid agencies have gone in to put a water source within a community is after a period of time, whilst they believe that they are educating the community, they found um, and identified individuals to uh, take ownership of the, of the actual water source, in reality what happens is it will quickly fall apart and we're seeing sometimes within 18 months the, the hand pump falling and failing. Now, the, the biggest challenge um, is, 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 is ensuring that we can sustain that. So the solution to that, we believe, is for, uh, the, for, for the organisation to ensure that there's an infrastructure based in country so that when there is a problem, and there will be a problem because everything falls down and breaks down eventually, that one, the, the community has ring-fenced or uh, organised the money to be there to, to manage the system, but also there's an organisation that can go out and do the repairs and that they know where to go, they know where to get the spares and the repairs. So it's a self-sustaining system. What we need to do is incentivize the individuals uh, who actually manage the water source. And the, the model that we have found to be extremely successful is that we make it a business. So we make it a business for the local water entrepreneurs to take ownership, not just of one community system or maybe two or three systems. So they actually receive a financial incentive from the collection of the water, um, for, for, from the community contributions. So that it's their own business. So they can also you know, have, a, have a good livelihood and raise their standard of living. If it's just left, if there's nothing in it for anybody and they can't see where the benefit is, then that's where it quickly will fall down. So we uh, ensure that we set up mini water businesses so that person has a, the responsibility of ownership of that community, of making sure that it's being serviced, it's being repaired and also collecting and ring fencing the community contributions so that when the system fails there is money there and there's expertise there that they know where to go to to actually get the repairs done for the community. It's our responsibility as well as putting the sources in, repairing them, but is actually to do that handover and supporting and training and guiding the, the local governments in taking ownership of that eventually. And I believe that's, that's a responsibility that every NGO, if they're putting any infrastructure into any developing country, needs to think about you know, how long they need to be responsible for helping support sustaining it, but how they're going to have an exit and supporting the government to take ownership and responsibility for that. And